Bomb went off. Buildings splintered and crumbling, homes reduced to rubble, and survivors struggling to fill basic needs. As we're trying to save anything and ceiling is falling. Yeah, still a long way to go for folks now. Uh, let's talk about the West, the heat, the wildfires, and fighting wildfires comes with enough challenges without the global pandemic. How crews are in this morning. We cannot catch a break here. I will tell you, you will catch a break by the end of the weekend, but for now, still looking at a zone of rainfall, some of it heavy at times, making a slow drive for you this day. A bomb pop. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, many of you big front coming on through. It's a strong low pressure. It's why it was so windy yesterday across the Great Lakes. I mean, those winds whipping 40, 50 miles per hour up here. Still windy out here today, actually, as this low pressure lifts out of the area. Now, the front itself, this is like a squeegee front. You know, you take the squeegee down your window and it brings all the water down. This front is just squeegeeing all the moisture out of the atmosphere. And we've got dew points really dropping behind the front. I mean, look at St. Louis, 53. Look at Lexington, 70. So there's a big difference in how the air feels in both of these spots. It's sticky, it's humid still in Lexington. St. Louis, much more comfortable, and we're going to be looking for some quiet, dry conditions out there today. All right, so let's talk temperatures. Now, temperatures do warm up here into the 80s. We look at St. Louis, at least for a moment, we're going to spend about in the 80s. But the thing about these lower dew points and the fact that we're behind this front is that the overnights are going to drop down. So we'll see to get to Saturday morning, low 60s for you in Chicago, Minneapolis. We're going to be in the 50s. Next week, an even bigger front comes in and this one is going to drop our high temperatures about 35 degrees below average. Get ready. Jeez. You know, Jen, I think that's my new up coming in from the south, not too far from Clear Lake and Lake City, uh, League City. That is you are seeing the storms as well. Jumping over towards Austin area, a couple of showers out here, not too much lightning uh, in town, but we've got a few showers not too far away from College Station. Thunderstorms in Tyler, Texas, Longview. We've got thunderstorms here as well, heading up towards Mount Pleasant yet again this morning. It's been raining the past couple of mornings here. Ground is saturated, streams and creeks running pretty full, so be careful if any of this rain gets too heavy. Little Rock, a couple of showers, not a lot. Saw that ahead of the front this morning there. And then we take you into the northeast where, yes, we're not completely done. We have a few showers, but nothing at all like what we had yesterday with those big storms. Jordan. Well, flooding is bringing a double whammy for Hurricane Lara survivors. Look at this. Early morning rain it shut down streets in Longview on Thursday. High water like this is trapping some families who want to just return to Louisiana, but the governor is urging them to stay put because parts of the Bayou State oh, and happy man. Friday to you. Uh, uh, yeah, MHQ. Yeah. Oh, I'm meteorologist Jordan Steele. <laughs> meteorologist Jen Carfagno. It is a Friday, isn't it? Let's get you out the door this morning, get you caught up on what's happening with the weather around the nation. We start off with our top stories. And yes, the tropics are active. We've got a number of tropical waves out here, a couple areas to watch and invest all have some potential in the coming days for developing. Yeah, we are almost at our peak, too, of hurricane season. Hopefully, we'll go on the downward trend, but there's a lot of activity coming through. Also, some showers. Lone Star State getting it yet again. Watch out for flooding. I know it's going to be hot, but we've got that yeah. flash flood threat from Del Rio, San Antonio, all the way up to North Texas. And then speaking of hot, I mean, you don't know hot, so you go to the west this weekend. We've got record heat. In fact, all-time record heat can be set in a number of cities. That's right. All right, let's take you to Houston now. Coming in, you see that the grass kind of blowing a little bit in the wind. It's been very windy. Um, not just a breeze like that, but very windy all through the Great Lakes behind this front. Pretty strong low pressure, especially for this time of year. That's moved up into Canada. Now the front as it extends from the northeast all the way back, back down into the Midwest and Plains. This is what I like to call a squeegee front because it just like squeegees out all the moisture from the air. Lower dew points behind it, still higher dew points ahead of it where you feel the humidity. Uh, but we will be looking at a much more comfortable air mass behind it. Temperatures are in the 50s to start. We're warming up very nicely. This is a gorgeous fall day in the 70s, cooling down to the 60s tonight, Jordan. Yeah, those morning hours are going to feel without a global pandemic. How crews are adjusting to the new normal and what why that may mean more work and more loss for homeowners in the line of fire on a getaway for the holiday weekend. Well, your Subaru safe driving forecast here shows us where we have some rain this morning. It's going to be a wet road or two, especially in parts of Texas, Arkansas. We got some rain showers again. Not as much as we've seen recently. It's not the big deluge, the big flooding rain there, but there are some showers that are going to make the roads wet. The heavier stuff is down into Texas, heading up towards Mount Pleasant on its way towards Texarkana, Tyler, Texas, I-20. This route heading over towards Dallas in or out is a real wet one this morning, and we've got that rain continuing off to the south to a couple of showers around Austin to start your day as well. All right, Boston, let's take you out here. Look, it's a classic staple, it's you classic. Know? but you know, he's still got the music going. So he's got I, mean, the mu I don't know how he had that must be just playing on his radio. That is fantastic. Sure there's like an inner he's memory as a child, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, oh, what is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, how sweet.
All right, you guys. Well, uh, if you guys are interested in even more weather and science, I want to remind you to check out the Weather Channel's new show and the mobile streaming app called Quibi. I host the show. Yeah, called... the Rocket Pops, whatever you call them. That yeah. was intentional. That was intentional. I love Bomb it. Pop. Yes, it was intentional. <laughs> I feel so like this great. is sort of the last hurrah for summer this weekend, right? Yes. Oh, make sure you're ready for it out there. <laughs> All right, we've got you expected to develop, but there's always a chance. We watch that kind of thing here, and we watch everything in the tropics because we know things can change so quickly, actually, during tropical season. So look at this map. It's busy. We've got two areas to watch and invest over here heading towards the main development region in the Atlantic. Tropical depression Omar, believe it or not, is not quite a remnant no low just yet, but it's on its way to being. And then there's this non-tropical low, which is an area to watch because there's a chance. It's a very little window, a chance that it could gain some tropical or subtropical characteristics. All right, so let's zoom in on that. We go to Omar, which again, it has been a, cer a low level circulation with you know, all of its activity off to the south and east. That remains the case. Uh, the next area to watch has only a 20% chance. It's about to move over cooler waters, but still, I mean, look, it's something that we need to keep an eye on because things change pretty quickly in the tropics. Then this has more potential. So we've got 40% on this next wave coming off the coast of Africa, 70% on the one that came off in the last two days and is sitting over here uh, close to the Cabo Verde Islands. And then Invest 91 has a 40% chance of developing. So we're keeping an eye on all three of these. How do they interact? Do they actually develop? Is there too much wind shear in the atmosphere? These are all kinds of things that we look at, but we know that, you know, being in the peak of hurricane season, that the odds are over the next week or two that something will develop. So we're just watching to see which one has that biggest potential. So low level spin. Here's a look at the European model. The GFS model uh, has it slightly different, but still has spin to watch. This is where we are. I mean, we have 66 percent of the season to go and we are right here about at that peak, which happens to be about December, September the 10th. Steph. Time now for your. I don't know if you're ready for this. Did you, the record drops in temperature is what's going to get you. It's all about the change that is coming. So here we go next week. Here's our jet stream taking a big old dive and cold air from northern Canada coming in. Funnels in pretty quickly, too. You've heard me probably say before, cold air waits for no man. I think I kind of got that saying wrong. A college professor used to do it. But cold air is dense. It's heavy. It's on the move. And man, does it make some progress coming in next week. Big changes. Temperatures go below average, 15 to 25 degrees below average. Um, on Monday, on Tuesday, 30 to 40 degrees below average. And on Wednesday, we are still 15 to 25 degrees below average across the heartland. But this is what gets you the shock to the system. When you look at our temperatures go from 100 on a Sunday to 90s on Monday and then 56 degrees in Dodge City. You see that here on Wednesday, 58 or Tuesday and then Wednesday 58. Denver, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to be practically 100 and then we drop into the 40s for the high temperatures. Here we go. I mean, look at the morning lows. Record lows are likely to fall Thursday morning. We've got temperatures in the 30s in Denver and Amarillo, Texas. I mean, look at this. It's been a hot summer here. The heat that doesn't surprise us anymore. This is going to surprise you. Temperatures over the weekend heading up to mid 90s, 96 degrees on Monday. And then, oh, we got a fro pa. You guys ready for that next week? Yes. 67 degrees is our forecast on Tuesday. Such a huge change. And Steph, you look at the pattern, likely to stay below average for you yep. as we get through the early part of next week. Okay, so the big question is, all right, I know. let's take a look at our forecast in the West and all of the heat that we have building for the weekend. Look at all of these record high temperatures throughout both today, tomorrow, Sunday. Uh, some not just daily records, some monthly records, some all-time records are possible. And September's a hot month for us out here too, right? California is probably our hottest. Um, and we've got the heat, we've got the dry conditions. The drought has been getting worse and worse every week out here across the West. And in fact, you notice how much of the landscape was colored in the bright yellows and oranges and reds. Well, we've got 85 0.18% in drought here. That is the most that we have had, the worst situation since October of 2018 when we had 85.85% in drought. And remember, you know, the drought and the fire situation we had back then. Uh, we, you know, go back to just last June when we had gotten rid of all this. Only 12% of the West was in drought and it's just gotten worse and worse and worse and worse since then. Running below average in a lot of spots like San Francisco, we're close to nine inches below average with rainfall. We're not going to get that. We're only going to have the heat and the dry weather getting into the weekend. 85 large fires that are burning right now. Um, and, you know, one spot that we didn't have any at the beginning of this week was in Montana. Now that has changed, of course, with the dry conditions and windy conditions we've had. And that's why you're under a fire weather watch for today. Plus, we've got the smoke and that smoke is going to be heading all the way into parts of the Midwest at the high levels, guys. 
Severe storms slamming the Mid-Atlantic Wednesday. Heavy rain and powerful winds unleashing on the D.C. Baltimore metros. Parts of the Capitol Beltway closing because of flooding and gusts over 50 miles an hour knocking down trees across the district. Welcome into AMHQ on this Friday morning. It's not all bad news. We expect a mostly uh, storm-free holiday weekend ahead. Let's get right to a preview of this weekend's forecast and show you that really it's overall going to be a pretty nice Labor Day weekend starting today as we head into uh, tomorrow. Look at this. Overall, it's going to be nice. The one thing is, is going to be scorching hot in the West. And by the way, enjoy the heat in Denver. You might be saying, Abrams, this is way too hot for Denver. Our temperatures are going to plummet, and we actually could see snow as we get into next week. So here we go on our Sunday again. Overall, it's going to be pretty quiet and pretty dry. Now, one place that will have a dreary Friday, eastern Texas. This was a scene in Longview yesterday where storms dumped nearly three inches of rain. It doesn't take a lot to get flooding here that closed some roads, uh, but not before disabling a car that you can see in this video. And Jen, more rain uh, in the forecast actually for this area today. Yeah, it's raining again. Sometimes you do get really pretty colors like that that pop up, right? The pinks, the purples, you know, especially at sunrise. So for a second there, I was like, wow, this must be. Oh, yeah, no, that can't be true. That can't be right. All right, let's show you what uh, you're not going to be loving here as we head into really our Saturday into Sunday is when we have our next chance of seeing severe weather with a system that's going to be coming through. The other thing Thing it's going to do is it is going to just crush all these temperatures. I mean, like a can, like look at Omaha. Notice that right in the warm sector. See, this is that leading edge of warm air. And so Omaha is at 95 while everyone else is into the 70s and 80s. Now, as all of this pushes through, we are going to see that chance for storms fire up as we head overnight. So tomorrow night, Mankato down to Mason City, you have the possibility of seeing some thunderstorms. And of course, we will have some very heavy rainfall with these two. So there's the possibility of some flooding. Let's take you hour by hour starting at Saturday evening, uh, 10, 11, 12. And you see it's going to be an overnight event where we see some of these showers and storms firing up you don't it's not always just a sunshine thing where you see everything pop a lot of it has to do with the wind direction the energy and the atmosphere that's coming in and we do see by Sunday morning you'll see some of those storms dropping south through Iowa and making their way all the way into Illinois but the good news with this is this is what's going to usher in that colder air. Behind it, you're going to see a significant drop. But again, here's a look at our hail. This thing could put out some hail, so we'll be watching for that. Jen. Sad. Right, so we're going to take you here region by region. We're going to start you off in the northeast and show you it's actually really nice Labor Day weekend here, starting it off uh, as we head into tomorrow and even Sunday. You see lots of sunshine. Get out there and enjoy it here um, while it lasts, because as we know, this means if it's September, people are going back to school and uh, we're only, what, a month or so away from the potential of blizzards happening here, right? In the south, we're actually going to be protected by big high pressure. And what that means is that the air is actually getting suppressed in the atmosphere. And so clouds can't really grow. And that high pressure is going to protect us the whole weekend here. The exception of Florida, you'll see some storms, but you'll want some of that to cool you off from all the heat and humidity you'll be dealing with. But really no problems here uh, throughout the southeast as we head all the way through our Monday. What about as we take you into Texas, South Padre Island? I know a lot of people have been planning trips and, you know, Texas has had a lot of either, you know, threats where you had a trip and then you're like, great, we can't go because there's a hurricane threatening type of a thing. Um, or an actual hurricane that has made landfall. So it doesn't look like any hurricanes will be causing any issues here, but your burn time is only 10 minutes. And don't forget your feet on that sand. You know, you instantly like want to take your shoes off and get on the sand and walk. But sometimes it's, you know, you, you really can. I don't know if you can really, I'm sure you can burn your feet, but um, sometimes it's just extra hot. Now, if you're going to any of the lakes here, of course, those water temperatures are going to be on the cooler side. It's Sunday when we'll see some storms, but it looks like um, overall Reynolds, some of that stuff is going to be overnight and then Monday a few scatter showers. All right. Is it cold enough to snow? I've got uh -huh. the answer for you, right? You've got that cold air in place. Will it be cold enough to snow? So again, we have our front as we head through basically mid into next week. That's going to drag down all of those temperatures that Jen was telling you. And there is the possibility to see some of this frozen precip and we could set records seeing it this early. Look at Monday night. Wyoming I'm, has a good chance of it down into Colorado. But guess what? Denver, yesterday, I even drew, drew snow on the board. I remember Cantori's like, Abrams, really? You think they're going to get snow? Voila. Look at that. 
Denver could have its earliest snow on record. Now, we typically get our first snow October 17th. What's the date today? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> September the 4th. It's like uh, yes. a month and a half or yeah. a full month before when we typically get it. And then it's going to wash out into rain. But let's show you the two models. So the Euro is actually pretty heavy all the way down into New Mexico, and they're a little bit heavier on the snow. The GFS is a little bit more pulled back, but still some of you are going to get creamed with that snow. I want to show you this. This is our earliest snow on record, September 3rd, all right, 1961. So it can happen. We had four inches. That's pretty uh, sizable there, right? But we will certainly uh, be in the earliest snow uh, here category, Reynolds as we look at these dates, going back to 61. Oh, goodness. And things are getting, you know, pretty active out there. There's several areas that we're keeping a close eye on. The question is, will these affect the lower 48? We still have Tropical Depression Omar hanging tough here in the Atlantic. But let's talk about what we're going to be dealing with as we head over the next several days. A little area to watch, thankfully, that's uh, out to see here. You can see a swirl associated. You see that swirl right there. But all the convection is blown off uh, to the east side. And then you have Omar. You see that swirl just hanging on. But again, not a lot of convection associated with it. Water temperatures will be a big player here because in order to get development, you need to have your water temperatures at 80 degrees or higher. You know, we see that Omar is sitting in some of those warmer water temperatures, but our other system, you know, I mean, we're just at that threshold for tropical development. Could also be a subtropical system uh, if the National Hurricane Center did want to name it here. 20% chance of development on that one uh, as we head over the next five days. So it doesn't look, you know, too much. But we do have the chance of development here with uh, this system, 70% chance of development. And we're watching other waves here come off the coast of Africa. And you'll watch these little swirls as they continue, you know, to move across the Atlantic. And we need to think of our friends here down in the uh, Caribbean that will be watching the swirls. The, the question is, are these going to get picked up by a system and then make their way northbound? If we look uh, into the weekend here, September 12th, uh, you know, the euro does have a couple spins out there, but it's still a ways away and we still have to continue to watch that here. So this is where we look for development this time of year. It's called the main development region out here in the Atlantic and then closer to home into the uh, Gulf and also right off the coast is where you could see some storms develop. And if you look at September hurricanes by landfall, Florida has the most at 19. Of course, Florida sticks out like a sore thumb. And they also have, uh, excuse me, that's how many majors they have, but they also have the most hurricane landfalls at 39. And Louisiana and Texas actually not too far behind when we're talking about uh, having those landfalls. But into the Northeast, you might be shocked to see this as well. Hmm. Now, don't forget, Superstorm Sandy was an October storm, but we have had uh, September storms here into the Northeast. In fact, we've had a couple majors make landfall here. That, of course, would be Category 3 or higher. Speaking about Category 3 or higher, this typhoon right now is on the cusp of having winds uh, near Cat 5. It is going to, you know, those winds are going to go down a little bit as it heads towards the islands, but still, this thing is going to be powerful. Jen. Yeah, and again, South Korea. In the United States, let's have a look at our forecast. And overall, I've got to say, with the exception of the heat in the West, it's going to be pretty quiet, all right? But we do have some cooler temperatures that have been coming in. And this is really, I was just tweeting about this, the appetizer. And let me tell you, the big meal that is just going to stuff you and you're like, oh, I ate too much, that's coming next week, okay? So we do have some cooler. Look at Minneapolis, 73 degrees. That's a little bit on the cooler side, right? And it's the fact that our dew point temperatures are going to be low will make it feel even cooler than that. Now, as we head into tomorrow, Denver, enjoy your 99 because come Tuesday, you could have snow on the ground. I'm not exaggerating. So enjoy that heat. Tomorrow night, though, uh, Saturday into Sunday, we have a chance for another system to come through. That's going to kick off the storms. And then that actually is what is going to usher in the cold air, or part of it, I guess. That's going to go through. The cold air is going to dive south. Before we get to that, though, we're going to be just steaming record heat here into the west. And then as we head into our Monday, we will see a few storms. You can see the beginning of our system right there with that frozen precipitation that is coming into the show there. All right, speaking of shows, it's time for a little game show here. And by pulling this up, does anyone have any idea the what this game is show? Right. That's right. We're going to play. You crack uh, me up. <laughs> The price is wrong, yeah. Bob. Remember there that line go. from? All right. So today, actually, the hit game show, The Price is Right, 
debuted on CBS on this day 48 years ago. So we're going to start by guessing how much the temperature is going to drop in a city. So the Price is Right rules, the closest without going over. And we okay. don't know we don't know the answers here, whether producers put this together. Yeah. So we could temperature oh or how many degrees? Like it's going to drop 20 degrees or you want the actual temperature? Okay. How many Tuesday degrees? Morning. Oh boy. Oh. By Tuesday morning? By, oh, that's, that's a big number. It is a big number. All right, so we have to guess. Heck yeah, we do. Okay, and then whoever wins is we're gonna play another Price is Right game. Okay. I'm going I'm, 55, Jen I, I 60. Think the, the smallest cool. 60 ever. Yeah, there Reynolds you go. with 40, 45. Yeah. Four degree Woo! drop. Wow. Jen, Got you us. are the big winner. All right, wow. so Jen's gonna <laughs> run up to the stage. We're, gonna, we're really playing as if it's a Price is Right here. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go, let's go. What's our next one? Okay, so our next one is that game High Low. Okay. Remember that game High I Low? I remember that, okay. All right, so you're gonna show us a city. Okay, all right. Here we go. We got a city, and then I have to figure out. We have to if figure the out. Next, you have to figure out if the next city is higher or lower. All right, here we go. Albuquerque, New Mexico. All right, Sunday temperature 96 degrees. Wednesday morning, they are going to 42 degrees. That is a 54 degree temperature drop. Okay. Okay. All right, so next city up is Wichita, Wichita Kansas. Kansas. Let's see what their temperature drop so will be. So, do guys. we what think, do you think they're going to drop higher more than 54 degrees? Yeah. I think they're not going to drop as, well, the first one was Albuquerque. They're going to drop more in Kansas City. I would, I would say, say so. I would definitely yeah, say so. They're going to drop more. So well, the temperature drop will be higher. Reynolds? I'm going to go lower. Lower. Oh, okay. just oh, Reynolds won. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, a stop clock is right twice a day. So every now and then you <laughs> yeah. get four in. All right, so do, do I run? Do I do the next one? No, Jen's going to do it. Keep okay, going. Okay, here we go. Away. Yeah, I guess go. this is what you get if you win. You get to be the host. All right, Kansas City. Uh, <laughs> temperature on Sunday, we've got uh, that we had a 54 degree temperature drop. So from Sunday to Thursday morning, let's see the changes. Will it drop more than 54 degrees is the question, right? Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, so. I'm going to go yes. They're going to drop more than 54 degrees. I agree. Higher. higher. Temperature drop. Too high. Oh my gosh. Oh, lower, you guys. Shocker. All, All right. right. There you go. All right, you guys. Uh, we've also got your weather extremes for you today. This is some extreme temperature drop, but oh, you won. <laughs> nice. Yes. Every I won with my right. one degree bed. Woo! That was All right, cool. so I'm going to come on Very down impressive. now to Very the impressive. stage, just like how they run up on the stage. I can't believe I won with the one degree bed. You could have like the warning that yourself. Was that, yeah. I was like, I'm doing it, you guys. And we did I not to. know these ahead of time. No, we no. have no idea. I'm in that shock right there. <laughs> All right, so it's time now for our second round, and I'm going to ask the questions and find out who comes in in second and third place. We're going to play a little higher or lower, guys. So here we go. Des Moines, Iowa, You Sunday, we're going to be at 97, Wednesday morning, 45. That's a 52 degree drop in temperature. Okay. So the big question is for our next city, will it be higher or lower than a 52 degree drop? Kansas City. Do you think Kansas City is going to drop more than 52 degrees or less than 52 degrees? I'm going to go less. You're going to go lower. less? Okay, yeah. well, let's reveal lower. our numbers here. Uh, our temperature on Sunday, 92. Thursday, 50, 42 degree Ooh. temperature drop. So you both get a point yeah. okay. on that one yeah. here. All right, let's do another city here. Again, will it be higher or lower than 52? Colorado Springs, higher or lower than 42? I'm sorry about that, in Colorado Springs. Uh, higher or lower higher, than 42? Higher. You think higher? Yeah. I'm going to go lower. Just You're going to go lower? Okay, let's reveal the answer here. Our uh, Sunday temperature. A 67? Good gosh, That's got to be one of the biggest. Wow. This is record setting for a lot of places. Yeah. We have never seen temperature drops uh, like I mean, this. 67 degree. All right, can we do one more? I want to go to for Colorado one Springs just okay. to experience that. Okay, <laughs> higher or lower than 67 degree uh, temperature drop in Jackson, Wyoming. This one's going to be big. High elevation. I'm going to go yeah. lower. But 67 is a lot. Yeah. You're lower, Jen? I'm going to go lower. You're going to go lower? Yeah. Okay, so our temperature yeah. tomorrow, it's the hot temperature, right? 89, 20. 66 wow. oh degrees temperature drop. I thought it was going to be a lot lower. By a hair. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a lot lower too, yeah. actually. So there you go. Who won? I didn't even wasn't even paying attention who won on that. You guys both tie. It's I'm going to give it to her. Right. She won. Give we'll it give it to her. Jen. Sure. We'll give it to you, Jen, because you have the next segment. All right, yeah.